The 21st century is rewarding us with technological advancements beyond our wildest dreams. Today, we travel the globe in new and faster ways. Thanks to modern medicine, we live longer and lead more productive lives. For the fortunate haves of the world, the 21st century is fabulous. For the have-nots of the world, it is still about despair. The despair of the have-nots does trouble those who have more. But then again, life is good in the 21st century and its benefits are many. We pursue our careers. Shop in well-stocked and brightly lit malls. Make lots of money out of thin air. Go to college with the hope of repaying our student loans before we retire. Enjoy life with our friends or pretend to enjoy it alone. And take luxurious vacations to briefly escape the stress of our daily lives. So who needs the bad news that life as we know it will cease to exist? Besides, if that were really true, it would already be on television, right? Before the millennium, TV reporters and analysts talked about tsunamis, storms, flooding, earthquakes, and heat waves. These natural cataclysms have always been a fuzzy part of humanity's existence. Ergo, the explanation that they will always be a problem has always made sense. That was until Hurricane Katrina devastated New Orleans in 2005. Following that, our focus sharpened. Since Katrina, television news anchors and pundits have begun talking a lot more about mega tsunamis, storm surge, severe flooding, superquakes, and killer heat waves. Where in the world did all these new superlatives come from and how did they creep into the vernacular without causing a panic? Are TV networks using them to get us to tune in? Or does all this go much deeper than that? After the tragic loss of life resulting from the Sumatra superquake and tsunami in December 2004, more precautionary tsunami warnings are being issued after every large earthquake than ever before. Worldwide droughts are placing hardships on man and beast alike as once productive farmlands are now being lost at a staggering rate. Likewise, a growing number of cities are adopting strict water rationing measures to conserve their shrinking reservoirs. Our forests are also starved for water and now being consumed by uncontrollable fires. Some are so vast in scale, their smoke trails blanket multi-state regions. For Americans, the months of August and September have always been about last-minute summer vacations and getting the kids back into school. Now it's about getting out of harm's way should another Katrina-class hurricane make landfall. While the violence of these storms may be brief, recovering from the damage they cause can take years, if not decades. For those spared the grief of being in harm's way, it is a sad thing to witness. Those who do find themselves in harm's way usually suffer what they refer to as hell on earth, one replete with great outpourings of national sympathy and many broken promises of assistance. Even for those out of harm's way, there will be the economic consequences. We may not feel the bite of the storm winds or the raging waters of the flood, but we'll usually feel the bite of higher prices. It is inevitable that as those in harm's way begin to pick up the pieces, we are beset by a swarm of profiteers who will swoop down upon us all to feast upon an embarrassment of riches. Meanwhile, global warming debunkers assure us that Earth changes are part of a natural cycle. They tell us the many reports of ice packs, snow packs, and glaciers melting away on the globe is of little or no concern. In fact, these smug debunkers assure us that the best thing we can do is not to believe our lying eyes. So what will it take before we do believe our own lying eyes? Well, that's a good question, because when we do, we begin to see an emergence of a new connection between natural and man-made failures. For example, 
An old steam pipe in New York City suddenly bursts through the pavement and gets national media attention. Given the media coverage, was this really a freak occurrence? Then the I-35 bridge in Minneapolis collapses with a tragic loss of life, a human event worthy of global attention. Although this bridge was known to be structurally weakened, the experts were still stumped. They simply could not explain such a sudden and catastrophic failure. Was this a freak occurrence as well? The truth is, much of America's infrastructure is in decline. A term that best describes it was coined in Russia several years ago. It's what they call painted rust, and we cannot keep on patching it forever. What that steam pipe New York and the bridge in Minneapolis had in common is that both were harbinger examples of painted rust failures. There will be more such failures of these old relics of painted rust infrastructure because they are all being slowly pulled apart by low-level seismic activity. So what is causing this seismic activity? Our infrastructure is much like our own weakened biosphere. Both are failing partly due to our own fault but mostly because our planet is being increasingly perturbed by something in space. It is a massive object called Planet X and it is approaching the core of our system. It has caused ancient cataclysms and by 2012 it will revisit some of those cataclysms upon us once again. Could this really be true? If you're willing to believe your lying eyes, there is scientific proof.